Thanks for coming back, Trappers. Glad to have you back in my first shed for part two, uh, putting up the Bobcats. That being said, I want to I want to make sure that you hang around to the very end. Uh, when I turn the hides and reboard them, I think you're really going to get something out of watching the Arizona spread the way it was taught to me by Richard Thurman. Rich had done a lot of cat trapping in his life, and I tell you, his uh, knowledge was invaluable, and I'm glad to share it to you, uh, with you here in this film. Uh, tight chains, trappers, until we, until we meet again. Okay, trappers, so it's around 8 o'clock at night. Uh, I've uh, put the put, put the bobcats on earlier in the day, probably, I'm guessing probably around two o'clock this afternoon. So anyway, it's no longer tacky to the touch. My eye has lost that moisture out of it. And I don't wanna wait too long to do what I wanna do um, to take this height. So I'm gonna pull out my arm deal but you see how they're still maintaining uh their shape a little bit that's what that's what we want we want it to be uh dry enough that that's when it happens so the next thing i'm going to do is start pulling pins so let's get that done get all these pins pulled out of here now i'm going to need just as many of them to tack it back up and what i watch I watch different trappers uh, with bobcats, and I really don't know how they how well they do with putting a hide directly on a board, skin side in, right after flushing. I just that part for me uh, is foreign. I I don't get that part. I'll put it that way. Uh, not without some additional borax, or I don't know how long they're leaving the hide on because it's certainly awfully hard for me to understand how a green pelt can dry uh, properly with it being so wet. Now I'm going to help myself out here a little bit and this height is not hard yet and I don't want it hard. It's, uh, it's a fine line between it's a fine line between um, Bobcats, I don't want it too stiff. If I wait until tomorrow, this is going to be like a rock. But I am going to go ahead, and in case there's some real moist spots, I'm going to put a little borax, just a little bit, and kind of cover, cover my skin. I still want it, most of this pelt is, is almost to the point of papery. If, again, if I wait too long, it'll be, it won't go from paper, it'll go to board, and we don't want that. So just a little bit of borax on anything that's still a little bit, like there's a little bit of skin. I'll show you. So you see where this is still a little bit uh, pale? It hadn't dried very much. Well, that's the spots I'm trying to get with the borax. Just something there to give me a little bit of a security blanket for it. I probably could have let this sit for another hour, but it's time for me to, about time for me to be thinking about other things. I, uh, I put a little bit up here, especially around the ears. Whether you're doing a coyote or a bobcat, go ahead and, that takes a little while for it to drain. So let's go ahead and get a little bit up there on the ears. Put a little bit on the back, and there's a few moist spots. There's other spots that's pretty good. All right. Most of this, most of this is coming off of the pelt. Just a little bit sticking, that's fine. Let me go ahead and turn this hide. Like I said, I could have done this much later. Let me see if I can go and push these legs in a little bit. Help myself out. They're actually drying pretty quick. I like doing the, what, I, what I've always heard it termed, I believe it being the Arizona spread to help highlight your fur uh, viewing, which I'll show you that. Get this started. 
There we go. Got one leg pretty much in. Let's get the other leg. And I'm just rolling itself into it. Again, this can be, if you let, if you let it sit too long, you're going to have a hard time. If you let this be dry, it's, it's too late. Um, you'll have to do things like soaking some rags and some towels and having that, there we go, having that sit over the dry area such as the head or the legs. So you kind of got to rehydrate it. So we don't want to go that way. There we go. Let's turn this high. Oh, for my coyotes, I use a broom handle, but this bobcat, it's, the coyotes are a little bit drier, but I don't have to worry about the legs with them. So there we go. Let's turn it. And I've had no problems doing it this way. No problems. Uh, I don't see fur coming out. I have my legs. Let's get them pulled all the way out. Because they're part of our presentation. And if you don't think, if you don't think that a, a, a buyer cares how your cat looks, well, you probably deserve the price you get. And that doesn't mean to be mean, it's just an honest statement. So let's go ahead and get this cat on the board, keeping the spots in the center. Now, now everything's got to be right. Everything has to be right. Looks, looks pretty good. Scoot this, scoot it over a little bit. These cats don't have that, at least this cat doesn't have that much white on him. He just doesn't. Here we go. I slid it a little bit. Yep, pretty good. All right, so let's get our belly board rest. Still, it's valuable. It's still valuable because as, as it dries, we need that belly board. All right. And I tell you what, I'll go ahead and pull this cat down. Give it. Let's get her. Pull our cat down, and let's get it on the board. Tighten that up. Flip it over, and we have our belly board in, and now we're going to go ahead. Now the object of what I'm trying to do here is I want to have spots going from here, and I'm going to highlight it by doing it up here as well. So I'll show you that when we get done. But right now it's about keeping those legs together. This is not one of your $5,000 cats. That part I realize. But it's a still, cats still have value from what, I'm, what, uh, from what I'm hearing. It went through kind of a correction, a little bit of a lull, and from what I understand, cats and raccoons are not going through, through China. That means if that's true, which I don't have a problem believe in the person that told me that but the cats don't if the cats don't go through China then that means those ports don't really have any significance for us so there's a chance guys there's a chance that these cats might be might be worth something to us I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down here at the base I'll do the same thing on this side and make sure these do not fold into one another. There we go. There we go. I got that done. Let's get the rump. Let's square that off. I tell you what, I'll go ahead. Had a little fat there. This this particular Bobcat is more rabbit backed, it, not so much fur, but I'll lift it up a little bit. Go ahead and get it trained. There we go. Uh, if you have a little bit of fur fall out, don't get me wrong. 
Animal shed. Don't worry about it. The um, most important thing is with handling fur begins from the time that we harvest the animal. We want to make sure that that animal is harvested quickly. Uh, I mean, it quickly and skinned as quick as we can. We don't want it to sit uh, till tomorrow. Now, it's common for trappers, and I've done it a thousand times in my life. I'll be harvesting coyotes throughout the day, cats, coyotes, what have you. But if you're starting to get to the stage, a belly's getting green, then we then you, you'd stand a higher chance of some fur loss. Uh, when we are the ones responsible for it, that becomes the issue. So now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I want this to stay open. I'm going to stick this on the inside. Okay? And I want to pin my stripes up. We're going to by the time I take this off, this cat's leg ought to be staying up and I still have it open. I want them stripes showing themselves. And we're going to keep, let me go on to the next one here. Did I drop it? No. Let me grab another one. Probably put it there. So I'm going to stick in my plastic clothes hanger again sideways. There we go. And I'm going to pin this leg up. This is the Arizona spread. And the object is, and the buyer knows better, but the object is, is it offers a really nice presentation getting as much white as we can. Now the next thing, we can take our fur comb and let's get this, let's get some as much white as we can going out and train it to go up a little bit, kind of, kind of tease that a little bit. Kind of doing it backwards, but I'm doing it for you guys. So try it. Better cats will have much more white and on them. And, and in all reality, this cat isn't that great. You see how many spots they are and how mottled they are. The best cats happen to have very few spots, but have big, bold, defined gun, uh, shotgun slugs in them. It just stands out. This cat's okay. I don't want to take nothing away from it, but it's not a high dollar cat. But we want to get the most amount of value out of the cat as we can. So I want to go ahead and I want to train that. I'm going to turn it away from you so I can look at it. Train that white to go out a little bit. Offer a little more presentation. And to some degrees, that actually, uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna kick them tufts out as well. There we go. That's the, that's this cat. You notice how I was able to brush it up and, and pull it out. Get that cat looking a little more white, a little whiter belly. So that's that cat. We got this guy done. This guy's ready to go on and, and finish hanging. Probably about three days. I can test inside of the mouth and see how it feels. The borax ought to help absorb some of the moisture coming out of the hide, but I don't want to borax the hide right away. I, I still want that paper refill. So I'm going to set this guy down. Let's do the next cap. I'll pull these out. Out of the arm. And... Let's go ahead and start removing pins. I've always been, a, as a farmer, um, I've been taught by watching a lot of individuals who try to th slide in some fur to slide in that roadkill that's got, that smells rotten. And that rotten fur is actually got some stink to it. 
And a guy sits there and he's trying to push it through the fur buyer. Now, I'm not saying the fur buyers don't get beat every now and then. But when that fur buyer turns right around and he's getting home, what do you think that, that fur, what do you think he notices? He got away with it maybe while he was there. But I tell you one thing, is that buyer is rethinking his past real quick of the day. All right. So I, I've always believed this. I don't sell trash to, for, uh, to fur buyers. I don't try to sell it. I don't want green bellies on my animals, so I want to get them skinned as early as I can. I want to get the animal, this hide cooled as quick as I can. I want to get it frozen, and I want to handle the fur. The best thing you can do to have a good quality fur is to take care of it. Don't throw 20 hides on top of one another that aren't frozen. Put a layer in at a time, let them freeze and put another layer so you don't get any hot spots in there. Get your hides uh, uh, put up and have a good quality hide. What if, what if, can, can you say to yourself that every animal that you put up after the tanning process is going to have all of its fur that, that you were portraying it would? And, and that's, that's kind of the, the, the kind of the, um, oh, that, that's, Kind of just what you got to be able to swallow. Can you swallow that? Now, I know some guys can swallow it just fine. But for me, I can't. I want the buyer to come back and have a good quality fur. When I, I'll show you my hides that are skin side out on coyotes. I'm going to show you. They don't have green bellies. Have I had them? Yes. Can some of them be saved and salvaged and whatever? They're lightly green? Sure. That, when, I, when I have snared and things, you get a 40-degree day. During the day, the coyote was caught early in the afternoon, and you know he started to he instead of freezing, he actually started to spoil a little bit. That's what the stomach's doing. So let me get this guy turned around. We want our cut, we want our pelts to be taken care of. Oh, first thing I'm going to do is run my borax over it. See how I get talking. I want to take care of my pelts, keep the quality to the best to the highest standards. And then I can look at them and negotiate. Maybe I don't like the price and I want to go somewhere else. I stand a much better chance by, by having that. I'm going to be talking in a later episode about marketing fur and options on the, in this day and time. It may not sound like we got a lot of options, but there are. How do the big guys, how do the big guys do it? How do they, how do they hold the fur and different things like that? And that's what one of my upcoming episodes is going to talk about. It's going to talk about how to hold your hide for future use and alternative ways of marketing. There we go. There we go. See, not that much is sticking. You can see there's a light dusting on it, but not that much is sticking. Now let me get the legs put in, and the legs are starting to dry really good. I certainly wouldn't, wait, wouldn't want to wait too long on these than what, than what I did, because they are really getting stiff. Every animal's a little different. Now my coyote hides that I put up this afternoon, I'll turn them tomorrow. They'll be fine. Takes a little bit of rolling. Now, if this was still green, it wouldn't be any issue. It would just go right in. Let me see if I can reach in there and do something. I can't. There we go. I think I'm getting it in now. I think. Okay. Just, there we go. 
I got it pushed in. Now I can now I can pull it out on the other side. Now let me do the other leg. Boy, I tell you what, any longer on that leg, I would not be in good shape. For those of you that have uh, questions for me, I get many emails at kansastrapplineproducts at gmail.com. I do my best to answer them. I used to answer questions about where would you put a set on this property, but I'll, I'll tell you what, guys, I don't do that anymore. Um, there's The best thing I can suggest to trappers on that is to go try to find the sign. Um, I could probably look at 20 locations on a farm and find potential locations, but that isn't the answer. We have to put the effort in, drive around, walk around, find sign, and set the sign. There we go. Getting this one punched in. Yep. Let's see if I get it. I think I got it good enough. We'll find out. All right. Pull this cat around. And he is not tacky at all. Neither one of these were, real, were tacky. This cat, he's got some nice white on him. Okay. See if I can pull these paws out. There we go. One done. See if I can get lucky with the other. There we go. Not too bad. Yeah, I actually, I actually kind of like this cat more than I do the big cat, but he's more... He's worth more just based on size. All right, let's get this guy put on. Making sure that the belly is on the belly side. Caddy Wampus, so let me. There we go. Looks pretty good. Uh, not quite. Get them on there straight. There we go. I think that's better. down there I think I got it let me go ahead and put a pin back in the tail and again we got another rabbit back bobcat but you know if you don't have any other fur you got what you got let's lift that fur up so just brushing it out very good. And just little tiny, little tiny hairs. Nothing big. Let's make sure I don't forget my board here. Let's get that guy in. There we are. Very good. Don't need to be quite that far. Now let's pin this cat. It's like, this is a pretty cat. I like them anyway. Seems to me his, his spots are a little clear. Uh, real nice cat. The whole object behind this is to give the impression of one long belly. That's what we're doing, folks.
when you get into the high dollar cat uh, and you have good quality put up fur a guy can get away with a lot of stuff right now with the fur prices being down let's make them pop so what about there's things we can do also and I don't have any but there's guys that will use some whitener on these bellies and they'll, and they'll, uh, you can pick that up at say a it's like for show dogs and, sh and show cats you can go ahead look look at where it's at right now I'm just letting you see see where it's at you can start to see where I started to open it up I'll show you the rest of it I'll keep on working on this and I'll show you what it looks like Look how look how much better that belly looks. Look how look how look how nice that looks. Let me go ahead and get the legs pinned up, and I'm going to stick my, and I'm not going to leave these in there for very long. This is just for until it finishes drying, or, or for a couple of days, and then I'll take these out and I'll let it finish drying without that. But is I've always heard this method is called the Arizona spread. Do you have to do it? No. All right, this is something I enjoy doing. Some people cut out cartilages. I try to make my cats pop with that. All right. We'll get this pin put in. And this will actually, when you take it off, this uh, these legs will stay up. There's one pin. They'll actually be trained to stay up. Let's go ahead. Get that in. Would you look at that? Now that, to me, I made I made I made um, kind of a, a sow's ear to an, into a silk purse out of this one. You have a night, it gives the impression of a very nice wide belly as long as I can possibly make it. Obviously, I can't make it any longer than what the cat is, but it gives that impression that way. It gives a little bit of value to that. That's how I put up my fur, folks, or on Bobcats. I think this method will work for you just like it works for me. Uh, it just takes a little bit of patience and time and dedicated time make sure that when you start it you finish the project let that skin dry just a little bit uh, prior to turning putting it on a board whether you're using a, even a split uh, a split uh, frame uh, stretcher like I use on my coyote stretchers for myself I like having it trained to where it looks like that or on, along the feet to give it a little bit better presentation that's what I do. You may have something a little bit better that works for you. This is the way I do it to make maximum dollars on my bobcats, regardless of where you catch them. That's the main thing, is you, whether you have a Kentucky bobcat, an Alabama uh, bobcat, an Arizona, Utah, Montana bobcat, we want to get the most we can out of these cats. And, this, and doing little things like this, I think, can equal to big bucks. Thanks for watching, folks, and I look forward to seeing you the next time.